baby. Oh, Bobby. Little guy. Back to quiet again. <laughs> Brother, Hi guys, it's been a while since I picked up the camera, but I am back in action and I'm here today to share Noah's birth story. This sweet little guy was born at 37 weeks and three days on October 28th at 11.10 p.m. We missed that magic time by just a minute, but that's okay. He's six weeks old this weekend but he's doing so great. We were really concerned about him being as early as he was, but he's been so healthy and so just sweet and perfect in every way. No health issues whatsoever. We're very thankful and very blessed to have had a healthy little boy. So starting his birth story, I'm gonna start at 34-ish weeks because that's kind of where things started to get going. Um, around 34 and a half, 35 weeks, I had three hours of contractions and they were about 10 minutes apart, lasting probably 30 seconds to a minute, but they were not getting more intense and they were not picking up in frequency. So I called my doctor the next morning. This was in the middle of the night. I called my doctor the next morning and let her know she put me on bed rest for a day and told me to hydrate and said that if I started having contractions again to call and see um, if I needed to come in and get monitored or anything like that. So I was on bed rest for a day. I ended up not having any more contractions. I would have like one or two here and there, but they were more of Braxton Hicks contractions. When I was having the contractions for three hours, they were not Braxton Hicks contractions. They were painful they were deep and low and they were building in a wave and they were a little more intense than braxton hicks contractions fast forward to my 36 week appointment i had my um my strep b swab that day so since i was already undressed she asked if i wanted to be checked so since i had had those contractions i said let's go ahead and check and just kind of gauge where we're at 
and see kind of what's going on. I figured that I was dilated something, um, but I wasn't sure how dilated I would have been. With my daughter, I got checked for the first time at 37 weeks and I was four centimeters dilated. So we kind of expected me to dilate early this time around as well. So she checked me at 36 weeks and I was two, two and a half centimeters. So she said, keep an eye on contractions, call if you have any, just kind of keep doing your normal thing. Fast forward to my 37 week appointment, which was exactly one week later, They my appointments landed on my actual transition day, um, or I guess progression day in my pregnancy. So one week later, I went in for my 37 week appointment and she checked me again because I had had some more contractions, but they were Braxton Hicks contractions, just here and there, nothing consistent. So she checked me again and I was three centimeters dilated. So I was progressing a little bit. This was on a Tuesday. So she said that if I wanted to, I could call Friday morning, call the office and see if she could squeeze me in and do a membrane sweep. I did a membrane sweep when I was pregnant with my daughter and it did not induce labor. It did start some contractions, but they did not pick up. I ended up being induced um, with Pitocin and having an induction date and all of that at 39 weeks and three days with her. So I, I, I kind of went into the membrane sweep thinking that it wasn't going to work. Spoiler alert, it worked. I do want to say though, I do believe that if your body is not ready to go into labor, that a membrane sweep may not work for you. Like I said, my first time around, it did not work because my body just wasn't ready. But because I had already been having contractions, I had lost my mucus plug. That was another kind of telltale that did not happen the first time around. Um, we decided to do a membrane sweep just to see. And my doctor was also on call all weekend long. So that was something that we were taking into consideration because my husband's a truck driver and he drives um, quite a distance away, like two and a half to three hours. So if I were to go into labor in the middle of the night, it's not as simple as him just coming home from work and we can go to the hospital. We also have a toddler that we need to take care of and have a babysitter for. My parents needed to like come and stay with her. So again, there were a lot more factors this time around than just having one baby to worry about and just picking up and going to the hospital when it was time. I called Friday morning and I was going to go in at 2.33 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, she ended up calling me around nine or 10 in the morning and She ended up calling me back around 9 or 10 in the morning and moving my appointment to 11.45 because she had a surgery and she didn't think that she was going to make my appointment. I went in at 11.45, which is earlier than we were expecting, kind of caught me off guard, but I was excited. I was nervous. Again, I went into this not expecting the membrane sweep to work. So I go in. I think I ended up getting in office and getting my membrane stripped at noon. So she said... I'm on call all weekend. Hopefully I hear from you tonight, tomorrow. Just track any contractions that may start and call if they get consistent. They have like an on-call answering service. So it'll go through them, then they'll page the doctor and then the doctor would call you back. So I go home, I eat some lunch. I just try and relax, try and not stress about anything. About 1.30, I start having contractions and they weren't intense. They were not super close together. They were not super frequent or consistent or anything like that. They were just kind of coming and going light contractions. So I just tried to stay relaxed. I sat on my exercise ball and did some hip rotations and just kind of bounced for a while. In our neighborhood, if you walk like around and back, it's about a mile. So I took my daughter for a walk while Anthony was doing some yard work and I told him, I said, I am having some contractions, but they're nothing too intense. They're not picking up super fast or anything. So I'm going to go for a walk and see if we can kind of progress. I was so sure through this entire process that my contractions were just going to stall out and I was just cramping from the membrane sweep and that it wasn't going to progress and nothing was going to come of it. So I go for a walk, I'm tracking my contractions the whole time, 
and they were about seven to 10 minutes apart, only lasting 30 seconds. Go for the walk, come back, and they were not stalling out. They weren't picking up super fast, but they weren't stalling out either. So I told Anthony, I was like, I really think that you should call in to work. I'm really nervous that you're gonna go to work and things are gonna start happening and you're gonna be far away and you're just not gonna be here in time. He ended up calling into work because I was having contractions. I hadn't called the doctor yet at this point. Um, I still wanted to track them and see, but I didn't want to push it until it was too late for him to call in or anything like that, which they all kind of knew that we could have this baby at any time. So they were on alert anyways. He called in and we ended up going for another walk. So another lap. We got back from the walk around 4.30, probably five o'clock-ish. And I called, it was probably closer to 4.30. So I called the doctor when we got back from our walk and I spoke to the answering service, told them that I was having contractions five minutes apart, lasting 30 seconds. And usually they say they need to be lasting a minute before you come in. But because this was my second baby and every labor is different, I wanted to call and be sure. If you're not sure, just call. The worst thing they're gonna tell you to do is labor at home or it's not time or just wait. And if they are kind of on that bridge, they might have you come in just to be monitored, which was kind of what I was thinking was going to happen because I was in denial that this was true labor. And so I called the doctor around 4.30. Around five o'clock, my contractions were picking up. I think it was 5.15. I hadn't heard back from the doctor yet, but I called my mom and said, that my contractions were picking up. They were now every three minutes lasting 45 to 50 seconds, but they weren't like crazy intense or anything like that, but they were getting stronger. So I told my mom to go ahead and head over. She's about 25 minutes away from our house. So I wanted her to be at my house with my daughter. So when the doctor called, if they said, okay, come in, like we could just get our bags and go. So I'm still on my birthing ball at this point, still doing hip rotations. Contractions are getting a little more intense. The doctor calls me back around 5.30. It was shortly after I had called my mom and told her to head over. And I told the doctor that they were only lasting 45 seconds, um, not a full minute, but they were only three minutes apart and they were getting more intense. I remember Anthony telling me I was in the kitchen on my birthing ball at this point because Holly likes to climb on me with, and if I'm just rocking on my ball and I just was in that mindset of being uncomfortable and I was in true labor and at the time I did not think that I was. So I was in the kitchen just kind of away from everybody trying to breathe through my contractions, trying to keep labor going if this was true labor because I was so scared that it was going to stall out and then we were just gonna have to start all over, which can happen. The doctor calls me back, she says to come in. My mom gets to our house and we head to the hospital. And I remember Anthony telling me my face had changed. He said that we were kind of cracking jokes and I was on my ball and I was having contractions and it was, I truly believe that it was the transition from labor to active labor because he said that I just got really quiet. I just kind of like sunk into the zone and I was very concentrated on breathing through my contractions. He could tell that I was getting more in pain and that this was it. So he said that when he saw my face change, he started grabbing bags and putting them in the car because he was like, okay, this is, this is it. This is the real deal, which was a whole new experience for us because we were induced with my daughter. So it, we didn't know what to expect as far as going into labor naturally. So my mom gets there, doctor said to come in. So we get to the hospital around six o'clock. We don't live very far from the hospital, thankfully. So we get to the hospital, we get put in a room, hooked up to monitors, all of that stuff. And they checked me. And I was three centimeters at noon when I had my membrane stripped. I was six to six and a half centimeters at six o'clock when they checked me. So they said that they were going to admit me and we were going to have the baby, which was very exciting. Um, 
I still was just in shock when they said that they were admitting me. I thought for sure they were gonna hook me up and send me home. I just, something in my head just told me like, this is not real labor. And it's funny because yes, the contractions were painful, but they weren't unbearable. And it's, it's almost like you would think having a baby would hurt more. And given I was six centimeters, so I was like in the transition into active labor and they were very uncomfortable. But if I would have gone to 10 centimeters, yes, contractions get very painful and you can't talk through them or you have trouble breathing through them. But it, again you just you think having a baby would be more painful from the get-go but it builds so call before it's too late <laughs> so we get admitted we i told them that i wanted my epidural and that was the biggest thing i was worried that we were going to wait too late and i wasn't going to get my epidural so my doctor knew that i wanted my epidural so we get admitted we get through all the questionnaires and then you have to get your iv they have to call down to anesthesia they have to give you a whole bag of fluids before you can get your epidural and all the things so i was getting a little anxious i was like okay let's pick up the pace here and get all these answers all your answer or all your questions answered so i can get the iv and get my epidural and i can feel so much better and at my hospital the epidural is a drip so you don't have to worry about getting it too early um, because it doesn't wear off. It's like a catheter um, set up in your back so it drips every 30 minutes and it's it's in as long as you need it in. The IV team comes up, gives me, my, I, gives me my IV and then anesthesia was right behind them. They were not messing around. It was super nice. Um, I think because it was later at night, um, they weren't as busy at the time, which thankfully they were able to get in and get me my epidural and I was feeling so much more comfortable <laughs> after I had my epidural. It does hurt when you get the initial numbing shot. It hurts pretty bad, but it's, it's very quick in comparison to laboring for hours and it starts working pretty fast. So very thankful for epidurals and modern medicine. Um, if you go through labor naturally, more power to you. I give you all the credit. There's no way that I could do it. So I get my epidural. They kind of check on me a couple times. I think they came in around eight or nine o'clock and I was still at a six. So she broke my water. I don't remember what time she came in and broke my water. They came in around 10, 10 30-ish to check me again. They said, when you start feeling, I think I was at eight centimeters at that point. And they said, when you start feeling pressure in your bottom, let us know. They put the peanut ball between my legs and they were like, just labor for a while. Like, let us know when you start to feel things change. It was around 10.50, I called the nurse in and said, I'm feeling pressure, it's time. But she came back in and checked me. My cervix was completely gone. It was, we were ready to rock and roll. So the doctor came in at 11, got all set up. My daughter came pretty fast. I only pushed for about 20 minutes with my daughter. So again, we expected my labor to be very similar. My pregnancy was very similar between my two kids. So she got all ready before we even did a practice push or anything like that. So we get all set up, hooked up, all the nurses are in there and we push through one contraction. You know, the three times you push for 10 seconds, take another breath and you do that three times. I started to push through a second contraction. I pushed halfway through the first 10 seconds and then she said baby pushes and there he was on my chest, not crying because he's so quiet. Um, but this beautiful six pound, 14 ounce, 19 inch long baby was set on my chest and it's just the purest joy. If you're pregnant, I can't even explain how amazing it is. If you've had kids, you know, it's such a magical moment. And I do think your second time around is less traumatic because you kind of know what to expect. And it's not it's not as traumatic because you've done it and you kind of know what's gonna happen. So you're not just anxious the entire time like you are your first time around. And I don't mean that in the sense that it's more enjoyable, but it's a little more relaxed. And we had seen the same doctor through both pregnancies and I've been seeing that doctor for about seven years now. So it was very, very 
intimate in the sense of my doctor feels like family at this point because we've been through this together. And so it was just a wonderful experience. Everybody was so nice and so sweet and Noah came out and he wasn't crying. Um, so I was really concerned that he was not getting the amniotic fluid out of his lungs because he did come so fast. He wasn't able to be squeezed and get that fluid out as he was coming out. So I constantly had the nurse checking him like, please check his lungs. Like, does he sound gurgly or raspy? Like, is he getting it out? Does he sound okay? And they kept saying he sounded fine and he turned out to be just fine. And I was so surprised because when you don't hear your baby cry, it is very, it's concerning, it scares you, but he was doing great. We ended up, he was born at 11, 10 p.m. So we had our golden hour, we called some family, we let everybody know that he was here, and we got moved to our recovery room about 2.30 in the morning, which was also a totally different experience because when I had my daughter, we went in at 6 a.m., so she was born at one in the afternoon, and we were kind of on like a regular daytime schedule. Um, that was not the case this time. Getting moved into a recovery room at 2.30 in the morning, it's very odd because they're coming in every 30 minutes to check your blood pressure and they're constantly coming in. So like the time schedule was kind of thrown off all over the place, but we managed just fine. Thankfully, we were able to have a couple visitors this time around. Um, Anthony was able to leave the room and go home. So my parents came to visit while he went home and checked on our daughter and stayed with her for a while. And we just had a great experience. We got to go home Sunday morning, which was insane. We weren't even there 48 hours, which was very crazy. I thought we were gonna have to stay two nights. And I mean, I guess we kind of did, but um, there are certain tests that they have to be like a certain amount of hours old before they do them. So we had to wait for that. But after that, we were able to go home pretty quickly. So we got to bring him home and he got to meet his big sister who absolutely loves him. She's doing so good with him. She kind of doesn't care about him. She just does her own thing as she's always done. And she'll come over and she'll pet his head. And But she hasn't been super jealous or anything like that. So we're very, very thankful for our healthy babies. And our little family has grown. And we are just soaking in every little bit of newborn snuggles that we can. He's been so awesome. And we are just enjoying life. You are just so sweet little guy. So, welcome to the world, baby Noah. We are so excited that you're here and we love you so, so much. And, and we are just over the moon that you have completed our little family. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video real soon. Bye.